This is Sammy from Team 2775E. I'm here with the World Robot just to film a quick little explanation. So starting off with the drivetrain, we ran 3.25450 um, with six wheels contacting the ground and then two raised uh, 2.75 tractions on both sides. The raised tractions uh, greatly helped with our barrier cross because the robot would over center on the barrier faster. Um, this ratio does require the use of custom thin spacers but it's definitely worth it. We ran front sleds and back sleds. Uh, our front sleds had wall riders on them to keep us, getting, uh, keep us from getting stuck on the wall. Um, and then the front ones were also tangent to the barrier. So they would lose a lot less power whenever we did a front cross. The ones on the back weren't, um, but it wasn't really that big of a deal. Uh, they still worked anyway. Uh, and also the front ones are supported because they, I'm um, uh, uh, had a lot less of the robots like forward momentum go into them a lot of that momentum just kept going but because the back ones weren't tangent a lot of that forward momentum would instead get transferred directly into a lot of that power would get direct transferred directly into the sleds uh, so whenever they were supported they actually snapped a couple times um, but I just took the supports off and they worked so next with our front wings uh, we had one on each side and uh, they were angled to pop tri-balls over the barrier. So we would just, um, whenever there was like tri-balls there, or, like especially from shooting, we could just knock them over to the other side, which was really nice. Uh, it was really good at scoring large clusters of them at one time. Um, the leverage was definitely unoptimal for front wings in terms of power, but because they were primarily just used for bowling um, and like guiding tri-balls along as we went, um, they didn't need that much power, and it was actually kind of nice because they would fold up against the wall instead of pushing us against it and slowing us down. Next is our intake. So we have a pulley on one side just to act as another wall rider uh, because without it, this little pulley piece can actually get stuck in the wall. We ran 900 RPM double chained. Um, it never broke at Worlds, but the double chain was just there just to prevent a single point failure. Um, and then we ran mesh intake with these little Delrin cutouts, these little laser cutouts. And uh, we ran 117B's rubber bands uh, across it. And then we just tied together the mesh with some string. Um, flex wheels were definitely better, but uh, the mesh still worked fine. Uh, and we also wanted it to fold up. So whenever we top loaded tri balls, the mesh would like compress. With flex wheels, what would happen is that it could jam sometimes, especially at like unoptimal angles of the tri-ball. Um, our hopper mech was pretty simple. Uh, it just had a poly plate on both sides to act as like little bars and then a standoff um, to push against the tri-balls. This allowed us to uh, put tri-balls in from the top, um, but it prevented them from getting like um, stuck uh, in the intake uh, coming in this way, like whenever we tried to score. Um, and then it also allowed us to top load for bowling so we could kind of spit the tri balls out with some force. Um, we had some kind of strong banding on the intake, but it didn't really matter. It was nice, um, especially for barrier cross because it kept the intake from popping up and prevented, helped prevent us from like, losing tri balls as we barrier crossed. Next is our back wings, so we have one on each side. This one was definitely the one I used a lot more. Um, I used it for contacting the match load bar whenever we bowled. Um, and then the scoop on the side was extremely helpful for clearing the zone because instead of going all the way back to our match load bar to run a relay, we could just scoop it out and then score it. Um, it's definitely way, way faster. We also had Odom pods here in the back. Um, we had obviously one parallel to the drivetrain, one perpendicular. This was um, really nice for our odometry and allowed us to have more advanced and smoother uh, autonomous routines. We also had a little intake drop down uh, so we could start an 18. Next up with our hanging mechanism. So we did a pretty simple piston C tier. We actually did start off with a high hang um, with a vertical bar, vertical pole, but um, there were just a lot of small things that could end up going wrong with it. 
and it just took a just took too long to actually get off in a match. Whereas with this, we didn't even have to actually hang in match. We could um whenever the oh it's kind of low in air right now. Whenever the um match would end, whenever the competition say entered disabled, it would just uh close automatically, which was really nice. Um, these polycarb gussets right here, uh, I just cut them out for the hang. It allowed me to kind of customize the position a little bit more because I could lower it and like put it off to the side, um, like relative to the, to the center of the robot. So I could try and get it to balance out as well as possible. And then it did actually end up snapping during competition, but I just patched it together. So it still worked. We ran separate tanks. Um, this one was dedicated to the hang. So it would only actually be used two times whenever we put it up and pulled it back down. And this one right here was used for the wings. Um, yeah, just the wings. All right, that's about it. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you.